Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingo. Welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Madingo. This week on Fixing South Sudan, a focus on diaspora and South Sudan relations. Is diaspora a boon or a curse for South Sudan? How can the vast diaspora networks be leveraged to ensure positive contribution to South Sudan? Can members of the South Sudan diaspora Fix South Sudan. Joining us in the program is Akola Gwengong, the chairman of Boer Community in the United States of America and an official of the University of Vermont, USA. It's our pleasure to welcome him to Fixing South Sudan. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Madi. How are you? Good, good. So when we speak of diaspora, diaspora is anyone living beyond the confines of the mother country. We can speak of the near diaspora, uh, the neighboring countries, Uganda, Kenya, and so on and so forth. Or the far diaspora, such as in the United States and uh, Australia, Europe, you are living in the United States of America. You have come back home. And you can unpack what it means to be a member of the diaspora. Does it have a concrete meaning? Uh, thank you, Mading, uh, uh, for giving me the opportunity to come and interview here in the studio. Uh, to answer your questions, I would say that the diaspora has a concrete meaning to me as an individual, uh, to me as a leader, and to us as a community, uh, because uh, we live there, uh, either in the USA or in Canada or in or in Australia or here in East Africa uh, with the focus of using our energy, our know-how, and our resources uh, to improve the lives of ordinary citizens here in South Sudan and also to use our resources uh, to develop South Sudan uh, to become a country that we are proud of. So being a member of diaspora, in my view, is actually an asset uh, to the Republic of South Sudan. But what makes someone a member of the diaspora? Uh, what makes you a member of diaspora is uh, when you leave out, I don't have a scientific definition of the term, uh, but the way I perceive it is that when you leave outside the country, which is now South Sudan, and you live in a place like the U.S., uh, uh, as, as a resident or as a citizen there, uh, building the lives there, but at the same time having a focus on being able to still contribute to your native country is what I define as a member of diaspora because if I move there and then I forget about South Sudan, then probably I may not uh, be defined as a diaspora. You have been living in the United States, studying, and working there probably for about a decade, you have been coming in and out of South Sudan. What does it mean? What, is the, what are the differences for those who don't know? Living in the diaspora and being here, and you have been traversing these uh, 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 two areas, what is the experience? Yes, I have been <coughs> in the United States of America for 18 years now, 
and 10 years in Kenya before that. So probably more than half of my life has been outside uh, then Sudan and now South Sudan. Uh, going back and forth, uh, what I have seen over the years is that uh, once you live outside the country for a very long time, and then you probably, things do change here, uh, but you probably do not actually see what has changed over time until you actually come back uh, to see what those changes are. So my own experience, uh, having come back in 2017 and now having returned now in 2018, toward the end of 2018, uh, I have seen that there are things that I thought they would still be the same when I left, but they have changed dramatically. For instance? For instance, uh, uh, when I left, uh, uh, Bor, Sudan, 30 years ago, uh, people dressed differently at the cattle camp. Uh, people live in the villages at the time. Uh, people rarely traveled to town at the time because they had lives in cattle camp in rural areas. Uh, going back uh, uh, last week, uh, probably uh, very few lives in the villages right now. Uh, the lifestyle in the cattle camp has changed dramatically. And, and so uh, it gave me a perspective of what issues are that could be addressed differently from what I perceive had I not returned to South Sudan uh, to witness those changes uh, uh, personally. You keep on coming to South Sudan. Yes. You are not ready to move to South Sudan. It's a very tricky question because uh, what do you mean by moving back to South Sudan? Like coming here permanently and becoming, uh, you know, a citizen of the country. I am a citizen of South Sudan. I am. And, uh, and I would say returning to South Sudan, in my view, is a relative term because uh, if you come every year and you have a house in Bor and you have a house in Burman, probably you are living in both places. So you might have returned to South, to South Sudan without having returned. Is that the diaspora reality, this duality, giving you the perception that uh, you are living in both and probably not even uh, succeeding in... In, in, in both. In, in both. <laughs> <laughs> no, here is, the, here is how I look at it. Uh, one of the things that American Jews did uh, when they moved uh, to the U.S. in the around 1914, 1910, 1905, mostly in Eastern Europe from Russia, uh, they moved to the U.S. and they actually decided that the U.S. was their permanent home. And so they built businesses, they went to his schools, uh, they, they built Jewish uh, religious institutions like synagogues, and they amassed a huge wealth. But it's still, their commitment to the nation of Israel was not in any way affected. So they used the resources they built, they amassed there, uh, to support the founding of the nation of Israel and continued to contribute to its security and economic development today. Uh, then what the nation of Israel did was every Jewish, every Jew, wherever they are, have what is called the right of return. And so they could be living there, but it still contribute to uh, the nation of Israel. In our case, I, I could say that why don't we build our permanent home in the US, in Canada, in Australia, amass the resources we could amass, and actually get involved in the politics of those nations, and then use those influences to improve the life of South Sudan. I'm actually, Why can we not do I that? I am going to get into uh, and picking a model yes. for South Sudan, which you are now recommending. Yes. But I'm interested in knowing what are the issues that keep you in the United States. And then we talk about the issues that bring you back here, because you have connection to both. Yes. Uh, the issues that have kept most of us in the U.S., and I cannot speak... I could speak... Or in the diaspora. In, in diaspora general. in general. I would say that uh, there are challenges there, uh, Madin, uh, that our people here at home may not realize. 
uh, people had to be alive. You had to start working from day one. You, had, you have to pay taxes. Uh, you have to go to a school if you have to. Uh, you have to take out loans uh, to, to be educated. You, you, you came from Canada. You, you, you know the experience of the diaspora. Then after you get out of college, you, you find a job, and then you start a family. And then your family uh, had maybe three to four, five kids. It becomes really hard for you as the husband or the wife uh, to leave to come back here while you actually have people that depends on you, while you have uh, uh, obligations like college loan obligations that you have to pay up. Uh, so being able to settle, in my view, being able to settle there and, 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 and become self-sufficiency up to a point where you could leave the diaspora for six months to 12 months. It's a difficult thing to it's do. It's a difficult thing. And, uh, and, and it's, it's a lifetime project. It's a lifetime project, and it, it becomes hard. And, and as I was talking to people here in Juba and back in Bor, it is very hard for them to grasp, uh, to get that. So that's a challenge. Uh, the other challenge that keep out there is, is coming here to South Sudan and find something that you could do that you think will actually make impacts. So some of us are having difficulty trying to find what that niche is in which you could actually permanently contribute to South Sudan. In my situation, if I do not have a family in the US, I could move back here today and I could stay without a job. And, 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 and I'm very confident that I can find something over time that I could do. But given the obligations that I have back in the States, like any other person, it becomes harder to move permanently, and, and I don't know when that time is. You have obligations uh, in the United States and also in South Sudan. You have some obvious tasks. Absolutely. You have family, kinship. Yes. Keeps you coming back and forth and, and, and solving their problems. Yeah, the irony is actually the obligation here actually also keep me there. <laughs> that is the irony. You have to uh, send remittances. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Bior is here in the studio, you yourself. Uh, we have been doing that, uh, which is I, am, I work at the University of Brahman. That is what I do for pay. And I also teach at the Brahman State College system, two jobs. Uh, now, part a portion, probably 40% of that revenue comes to South Sudan here, goes to Kenya, goes to Uganda to send people to a school to treat people, to also support community projects. Now, if I quit that job and come here, then what happened? Are you a prisoner? I cannot call myself a prisoner, but I think I'm a person with a lot of responsibility that I cannot avoid. Let's take a break from it. Thank you. Welcome to Dolco Media Services. We have so many services for you, such as video production, camera hiring, sound system hiring, event management, passport photo, stand-up comedy, printing, drama, music, dance, multimedia, and photography. Dolco Media Services, our culture, our pride. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor. We speak of the role of diaspora in building South Sudan. And with us is Akola Gwengo, the chairman of Bor Community in the United States of America and an official of the University of Vermont, USA. Can the diaspora fix South Sudan? Yes, absolutely. And let me just give you the uh, concrete example. Your very studio here is a contribution of diaspora. Is it not fixing South Sudan? It is, in a very meaningful way. I was just, uh, Dr. Bior just gave me a tour of the National Lab Center yesterday. Uh, he's, a director, he's the Deputy Director General of the National Lab. I'm just giving an example of what the diaspora who have returned 
who have found something that they can do uh, are doing right now. Uh, so the two examples that I have just given you are a contribution of the diaspora. Uh, we are contributing uh, to the development of South Sudan in many ways. The, the first contribution or the first way is what I have just given you. People who have been educated in diaspora who have decided to return here and use their professional expertise to contribute to the country. And you could name it in the media like you, in the science like the, the example of Dr. Bure that I've just given you. At the Barrios Department here uh, in the government of South Sudan, in the humanitarian world, and also in the business community. Uh, that is the person, the first contribution, people having returned here and, and so, worked. South Sudan is a liberated country, and many of the people who went back, like yourselves, you are part of what they call the Lost Boys of the Sudan. Yes. And now the South Sudan. Yes. And what did you do? What was the impact of that uh, diaspora movement. Oh yes, uh, if we go back to the period prior to the signing of the CPA, uh, we have, in my view, we have played the biggest role, the biggest diplomatic role in influencing the U.S. government to support the plight or the interests of the people of South Sudan. Uh, we have talk to our people in churches, uh, talk to people at workplaces. We have also talked to our congressional delegations. And, and as a result, this moment coalesced into supporting what then became the CPA. So in our role, we played a huge advocacy role. And the founding of South Sudan, or the signature of the CPA, in my view, has our contribution in it. And, and, and I would say the president, and, and then the founding chairman, Dr. Greng, would acknowledge that. They did acknowledge that. We did that. Uh, we also use our resources, as, as I said earlier. In, in, do you know how much money we have pumped into this country? You are trying to fix us for that. Yes. But let me talk about the negative contribution of the people of the diaspora. Yes. Social media propaganda day and night. It's amazing stuff yes. in a new country like South Sudan mm -hmm. where the diaspora is building hatred here, not building a nation and supporting violence. What would you say about that? And you are a leader of a community whose members are highly active on social media. Madin, uh, the issue of the social media, in my view, is social media actually, let's just talk about the Facebook. Uh, that is a big help in the room. Uh, it was founded by this uh, then college dropout, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, as a way of helping people connect, you know, keeping people in touch. So it was a post it, it is still a positive. It has become something else. Yes, he says, I'm, I'm getting to that. Uh, uh, so the, the way it was built was to keep people connected. And, it, it, and, and to some extent, this is happening in a very big way. Now, the very unfortunate situation in which people have been engaged in negative media, uh, you know, uh, is spreading rumors, uh, uh, doing things, saying things that, that may not help the situation here in South Sudan is very unfortunate, I would say that. And, and, and do, do you know the reason why that happened? People down there in diaspora is still love this country. They still care about this country. And, and it is because of their in, interest in trying to fix South Sudan that they end up in contributing in negative ways. So what should we do? Uh, the way we have been trying to uh, help resolve this situation is to talk to our people and say, please, whatever you say here in social media, has consequences there. So please, cease from negative media. It is OK to, to be engaged on the issues, but use those debate productively. The other way is to actually ignore them. Just look the other way. 
because some people are trying to get attention. Uh, some people need fame. Do uh, you feel that you, you, you have lost control as a leader uh, in the diaspora because anyone, anytime, can say something even against you, against the government of South Sudan, and against, and on live videos, yeah. is very destructive. They it, talk about social issues, about political issues, so many things. Nothing is off the bounds. Isn't it tragic? What can be done about it? It is very tragic. Not only am I, as a community leader, uh, not effective in resolving these issues, even the very governments, even, even the US government, even the Chinese government, even the government of South Sudan, people are still trying to figure out how, how do you control that negative uh, 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 contribution in the media. Even the real government with real policy power are still trying to figure out what to do with it. So I, as a community leader, my power is only what, uh, what, what political scientists call uh, persuasive power, trying to convince people to use common sense, to be rational. Uh, but I don't have coercive power where I could actually take somebody to jail. And that is why uh, we have been, we have not been able to, 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 to end it, but we have been successful. Actually, a good number of people listen to us and they have redirected their debate in productive ways. What will it take for Rakola Gwek with two master's degree, even from Harvard, to come back to build Sassuna? Uh, what it will take is uh, continuing to love my country. What will it take for you to move back permanently? Are you, do you want to give me a job? Is that what it will take? You need a job. Give me a job first. You need job security. Uh, I need to have a job in which I can actually do something that has real impacts in the lives of ordinary citizens, that has real impact in the development of South Sudan. I'm not saying that... Highly paid job. No, no. <laughs> no, you know, being paid... You know, they talk about something called brain drain, which is this idea the best brains go away. Yes. So what does it take to reverse it into a brain gain? For South Sudan. I think what would we'll do it, first of all, one of the things, I think one of the things that would we'll do it has already happened. Uh, the signature of the peace deal that has just been signed is a great thing. So I would advise our government to, to, to consolidate, I mean, to, to work hard to implement this peace deal. Uh, peace, conducive environment. A conducive environment. And people will have, I, people will have opportunity to come back even if you do not get a job. Should there be a special program to attract the diaspora? Why not? Absolutely. That would be... What form will that take? Uh, the form will give people an opportunity to get into, use their education if you are in science field. Finally, you know, create a, a good program in which people in the science field or social science field can come back and actually contribute in their area of expertise. The other thing that I mentioned that I have alluded to earlier is, is help people who have obligations back in the U.S. to, to settle, settle their those. debts and then yes. probably Come make a South, transition. Yes. Come to South Sudan for five years. If you have contributed in these areas, we will work with the U.S. government to forgive your college loan, and I think people will come. You mentioned that South Sudan should adopt the Jewish model yes. of making the best of those countries, yes. amassing enough wealth, yes. and projecting that yes. to South Sudan. Is that doable? It is. And wouldn't you argue that South Sudanese should come back to South Sudan since they went there because of a situation that has now been resolved? Yes, and I would, I would think that, absolutely, I would think that it is absolutely, it is absolutely right that every single individual that has gone to diaspora returns home and contribute. Is that doable? Is that realistic? Absolutely not. 
I don't want a situation where somebody will be staying for 30 years waiting to return to South Sudan without doing something meaningful to their lives, where they live. So what I'm recommending is you, the Jewish medal, settle where you are. Make yourself self-sufficiency. And then because you have become self-sufficiency and you are financially secured, it becomes a lot easier for you to return to South Sudan. So we are still arriving at the same destination. It is just using a different model. So the final destination would be returning here. And if it turns out that you are not coming back and you, have been, and you are successful there, it is a still a good thing, isn't it? So be it. So be it. Can South Sudan be fixed? Yes, and it is being fixed now. Absolutely, it could be fixed because th the sacrifice that was, that, 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 that the revolutionaries did to bring this country to fruition is huge. That was, that was an, I would say that was a big, a big, big, big role. And now that we have the country, being able to, and we have the know-how, we have the resources, being able to put the right people at the right places will enable us uh, to fix the country. I think we have uh, the know-how, the resources, and the will to make that happen. Is that called uh, fixing the United States or South Sudan? I am fixing both. Which one first? Uh, I would say both. The United States. Both. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming to the Thank table. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.